You're such an asshole. Hey, all. This is original. Finally get around to original. Finally have the time to do an original. Let us talk about people who drive Range Rovers in particular, but also in this domain. We have people drive, you know, the yuppie, not even yuppie. Yuppie includes like, oh, it's a fun car, but not probably everyone who drives like these Beamers and Mercedes luxury cars. Let's say they're luxury cars. Specifically those who are salesmen. Sitting there at a hoity-toity area in Las Vegas. And the Range Rover drives by. And a person says to me, hey, Aaron, boy, look at those Range You know, a lot of people I work with, they drive Range Rovers. I say, oh, is that right, Bill? And his name isn't Bill. He says, yeah, but, you know, I, I never understood why Range Rovers. Why not just the regular old car? Why did I say, ah, oh, Bill, <clears throat> let me explain to you salespeople, fancy cars, and those who drive and lease the fancy cars that you see on the, uh, on the interstate. So <clears throat> the old captain used to work in banking, right? And I got to see these guys come up in their Range Rovers and salesmen and businessmen and businessmen and businessmen blah, 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 blah. And they come up in their Mercedes and all that. And then they would come to my bank and ask us for money. Now, that, that, should, that should be a hint there, uh, lieutenants and economists. Why does somebody with a luxury car have to come to my shitty-ass bank and ask us for money? Aren't they rich? They obviously have this car. Well, what you find out is when you look at their financial statements and their balance sheet and their tax returns, which is what my job was, you find out not one of those motherfuckers own it. It's all leased. It's all borrowed money. And if they did own it, no, no, no. The bank owned it. We owned it. They had like the the the, the you know the Range Rover, the Mercedes, or whatever. <clears throat> it would cost like seventy grand, and they'd have a sixty-nine thousand dollars, nine hundred ninety-nine nine point nine nine dollar loan. They'd have one penny of equity, and we would hold not only the loan, we'd also have the lease and the lien uh, lien release. Like you don't get the lien. Uh, or the, the title, rather, until you pay us off. So, just to, in general, when you see these cocksucking schmucks with their fucking luxury imports, especially Range, Range Rover is a different, that's, that's Coma money, look that up, K-H-O-M-A, keep her off my ass money, you can find it on the internet, I came up with it, I did, my dad did. Uh, the vast majority of these people do not own those cars. But salespeople are interesting. Sales is different, see, we never had salespeople necessarily coming up to us. That we only had entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, businessmen, if what you could call them running businesses were businesses. Salespeople are different. Like, I see a lot of salespeople coming out to in Range Rovers. And I said, oh, well, you, you know, that's all, that's all for show. They want to fool their clients, their prospective clients, they're the real ones too, that they're successful and they know what they're doing. He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, trust you and me. He's like, well, what do you mean? I say, well, why are you asking this? Say, hey. If, if you got that Range Rover, you, you must be doing pretty well. Why are you working? You know, because to buy a Range Rover, you have to be rich. But, but if you were to buy, if you were to actually buy a Range Rover, like I bought this book by Adam Ping. I gave up my money. It is now mine. I didn't go to the bank to get a loan. I didn't go to the leasing company to lease their car. Now, if I have the money to buy it, well, that doesn't mean I'm rich if I buy this book. But if I buy a Range Rover, well, then you, you are rich. Or, or you're a fucking fool and you have no money and that's your only assets, which some people do. But let's just assume what they're trying to present themselves as. The, the image they're trying to achieve is that they're rich and successful. Well, if I'm to take them at the salesman's in a, in, you know, intellectually honest word, well, then you're rich. So then my next question, and this is the question you should ask all salesmen or women driving up in the Range Rovers or the Lexuses or the SUVs. Like, if you're that well off, why are you working? Who would work? Who wants to work? And this is where you start to, you don't even have to see their financial statements to see where the bullshit comes through here. All right? You find out they're not, if, if they are truly rich and they have a sales job, then that means they're willingly working because they enjoy it. Because that's their passion and their hobby. And some people do this. You know, some people, they'll keep, like Don Rickles. I just saw Don Rickles in Las Vegas. That man doesn't need the work. He's rich. He, he's set for life. He's 90 years old. You want to know why he still performs to this day and age, even though he's 90? Because he wants to. But this is not the majority of salespeople. The majority of salespeople are not 
rich people who are bored with their lives, like, yeah, I'm going to go and do sales, and then have the extra cash laying around because they're rich to buy a Range Rover. It is a ruse. It is a scam. It is a charlatan maneuver to say, look at my Range Rover that I own. Don't tell them I don't own it, that I'm leasing. Oh, look at this. I'm so successful. You should buy from me. And all it is, is that, look, I've met waitresses that have had higher net worths than most of these cocksucking salespeople. Because here's how their financial statements typically look. They have a McMansion mortgage because they're the dumb shit types to actually go buy shit they can't afford. These are the type of people that will borrow as much as they possibly can to keep up looking like they're with the Joneses. All right? So they don't have a lick of equity in any of this deal. So they're the type of people to not only have a car loan or a leased Range Rover, they're also the type of people to have a McMansion in the suburbs that they can just barely afford. Okay, they're the ones that go and take their credit card. They go into credit card debt to buy their kids the fanciest clothes. And up here in Minnesota, it's the fanciest hockey equipment. Oh, they're in such sports. Our children are so wonderful. We're fucking sucky. We fucking suck. But our children are just so wonderful. And it's a big show. But if you actually look at it, 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 look at their financials, you look at the fundamentals, it's a house of cards. They're barely getting by. They're certainly not making progress. Okay, let's just put it that way. You don't want to take advice, financial advice, from some cocksucker driving a Range Rover whose job is a salesman, all right? That is the worst person to take financial advice because their finances are basically, they're not, they're not even saving money. All they're doing, they're not even paying it off. All they're doing is borrowing everything that they can and then making the payments on the lease payments or the mortgage payment in that particular case or the car loan. So they don't own it. It's not theirs. They're literally borrowing it from the bank or the dealership or the real estate developer so they can temporarily live in it so they can see. I even, let me tell you another story, interesting story. I heard this <clears throat> back when I was in banking. It wasn't me. There was this couple. Um, what? It's like a multi-million dollar. This was above McMansion. This is true mansion. Maybe not palatial estate, but a mansion. And they had borrowed so much money. They, they made a certain amount, but they leveraged it. They borrowed as much money as they could so they could make it seem like they were that much richer. And they wanted to live in this gated community, and they got there, and they bought this house, and they got there, and they wanted to throw a party. Well, they had extended themselves so much, like these cock-sucking, range-roving salespeople bastards. They've extended the, themselves so much, they didn't have furniture to furnish the house with. They couldn't afford to buy furniture. That's how tapped and stretched for cash they were. You know what they did? I swear to God, didn't even know this fucking existed. They, they rented furniture. They went to some furniture store. I don't know. I don't live in this fucking delusional world of theirs. They went and they actually rented fucking furniture for their house opening party. So when everyone came in, they had all this rented furniture, and everyone, oh, that is my Thaddeus, and oh, it's Chazzy Big Chazzy Chaz. <laughs> Do you drive the Range Rover? Yes, the XP model. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, because I'm a Mercedes man, truthfully. My wife's a Beamer, we just always race all the time. <laughs> That's the type of cocksucking fucking morons that showed up to this party. And like, oh, is that whatever the Italian fucking thing that these posies in the suburbs buy? And, the, and then when the party went away, they returned the furniture. Now, this is now maybe that level extreme. That's not as common, more common than you think. But yes, dude, do not, everyone, I, and this is kind of like the high school kid who's like, God, my, everybody's got nicer cars than me. But it's like, yeah, the kid, one, the kids didn't buy that car. It's the parents that are paying for it. But it's the same thing except now double the age. These are people in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They don't have the money. It's the bank that's paying for it. Uh, and uh, what, what gets really interesting is when you gotta go and repossess one of those things, and these delusional, self entitled suburbanite swipple cunts, they're always like, that's my, I mean, oh, you think you're stealing. They'd much as soon get rid of their kids, which they do because they ship them out to daycare because they don't want to deal with their kids. Their career is just that much more important. Watch American Beauty, you'll see what I'm talking about. They, if you ever repo one of these people's like luxury, you know, preppy mobiles, the cocksucker uh, Range Rover salesman type, oh, do they get because that's that's their value. See, they they don't actually have love or compassion or romance, and they don't have children that love them. They don't have a spouse that loves them. It's all things. It's all stuff. It's status, 
and they could take their thirty or forty thousand dollars a year salary in combination with their husbands or wives, leverage it up to the fucking hilt, and then make it look like they're living a quarter million dollar per income lifestyle. But in that, it does. It, it one of two things happen. They either leverage up to the point that they can actually afford it, but they never actually bank any money. And then when it's then when it comes time to like uh, little Jimmy's got to go to college, they can't. And then the whole stack of cards comes falling down. Or <clears throat> there's a recession and they can't keep it up anymore. And you guys remember that in 2008, 2009, where you know the McMansion suburbanite developments uh, kind of went to pot. Uh, that's that's when the game ends. But the game is back now. People are lending again. But yeah, just when in general, you can assume that if they have a newly off the assembly line Beamer or Mercedes or Lexus or Range Rover or Jaguar, that's another one. Tesla, that's kind of the cool thing now is to get a Tesla because it's environmental green. Saw some fucking idiot put a goddamn bumper sticker on the sports coupe Tesla. I'm like, what the fuck? Hillary Clinton supporter, of course. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Anyway, if you see that, I'm not joking. It's a 95, 96%, less than one out of 20 of those people actually own the car. The vast majority of his lease, the vast majority of his borrowed, they are not that rich, okay? <clears throat> um, the second thing, if you see salespeople with, it, we picking on the Range Rover because that, that, that seems to be the motif today, but in general, if you ever see a salesman and they're driving a sports car, dude, they're making maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. And if they're a wife, like they're doing this for fun, if it's a woman and she's got, you know, the kids are finally totally at the subsidy of the hubby. I'd say there's at least a ninety percent, maybe eighty-five percent chance that the husband is subsidized. Certainly, she didn't buy that car on her own. This is just look up Coma again. This, it's keep her off my ass money. K H O M A. That's to get the woman out of the house, so like the doctor husband or the whatever, the surgeon or the true entrepreneur, the guy making the money, whatever. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Go, yeah, here's your fucking Range Rover. Go drive it around. Don't crash it like you did the last one in three months. Let's see if we can get to five, all right? I know, I know. You're not supposed to talk on your phone. I don't care what Tilly next door says about her furniture renting party. No, that's your fault. I got important shit to do. I got to do hard shit. Yeah, well, have fun, sweetheart. Have fun selling your whatever salespeople. I'm trying to think, like, realty, uh, and then, oh, sta staging, everything is realty, kind of, that, that's where you see a lot of it. Well, then again, that's kind of where I was invested, or I spent most of my, not invested financially, but where I was in banking, we always, everyone would put up their house, oh, I have a house, why is that a, <laughs> like, yeah, good for you, fuckface, you still got $3.2 million out and outstanding, and you're past due, where's the fucking money, Mr. Rich Man, and they don't have the fucking money, anyway. So, yeah, just don't one, don't get jealous. Don't get worked up. These people are miserable. I've seen them. It's all fake. I mean, you've got to put on this fake show. You are not yourself your entire... I get to be me. Hey, because I drive a fucking Chevy. <laughs> I don't think I've spent... No, I haven't. I have never spent more. The most I ever spent was $4,500 for a car. And that had 30,000 miles. And that was a salvage car. I got a good deal. And I, damn, I've put like 120,000 miles on it. Um, oh wait, no, my motorcycle, ah, no, I'm sorry, my motorcycle, that's the most I ever dropped on a, on a vehicle, that was $5,000, big money there, but unlike that, see, what I did is, now this is for all you range roving soccer moms out there, I took my check, I gave it to the dealer down in Sarasota, Florida, and then he gave me the keys and the title, now I know you've never seen a title, that means you actually own the fucking shit, but... I know, the world of rent and lease and daddy's money. I know you guys don't know what that is. So anyway, yeah, don't worry about these cocksucking Range Rover driving salespeople. There, that's precisely what they are. They're miserable. They're faking it. And you know what? These are the type that do end up like, well, when the ladies get the force of money into pulling tricks, but down the road they're asking their kids for money because they so much manage their finances. So anyway, best of luck to you. Toodles.